Hey everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I want to show you guys another really long-lived, easy-to-grow annual that I'm growing on December 27th, and I can still harvest to this day. You know, we are two months now past my last frost, my first frost date. So uh, November 1st is my first frost date. We're two months past that now, almost. And I still have a couple annuals that are going strong. Whereas all my perennials, figs included, they're dormant. And I know they're a lot less work, but to get an annual like this that just keeps going, I think is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. I wanna show you guys my carrots. And this is what they look like today. The leaves kind of look a bit of a mess. Because I just took them up off the ground and put them on top of each other. But look at these roots. These are really thick, big carrots. If I could pull one out of the ground for you guys, I'll show you. The soil here is not as loose as I would like it for these carrots. But they are exceptionally long-lived. Nothing bothers them. They're very tender and easy to grow. Check out that carrot. That's not bad for December 27th. And these guys will hang out here probably all winter time. I can leave them in the ground, you know, assuming it's not too wet and they don't get rot on them. You know, um, I'm sure these roots, cause they are roots, they could eventually, you know, get root rot and kind of rot that way. But I could pretty much leave these guys here all winter time and they won't have a single problem. Um, not only that, but I can plant them somewhere in mid-March to early April, well before my last frost. And I can also plant them sometime in the summertime for a second crop if I wanted. And my goal, I think, next year is going to be really simple. We're going to have a lot of heat-loving crops in this bed. This is a great microclimate for keeping things a bit warm. And what we'll do, instead of having the melons and the tomatoes and all that cucumbers and the eggplants and all that stuff that loves the heat. Instead of taking all that out of here and having nothing in this bed, because we want to have something in the soil at all times, right guys? We want to have the mycorrhizae still, you know, attaching to roots that are supporting that mycorrhizae so that when I plant into this bed, it's ready to go. It's extremely healthy. Uh, the mycorrhizae is going crazy, right? So instead of just taking all that out of here and having nothing, I can put carrots, I can direct seed carrots underneath all of these plants that we're gonna grow vertically. And yeah, they may not get the most amount of sunlight and they may not do a whole lot for most of the summer. But when things start to cool down and around mid-October, we'll take them out of here and then all the carrots will shine through and I'll get a pretty decent crop of carrots um, at that time. And they don't need to be the biggest carrot, right? They don't need to be this size. You know, in fact, most carrots, when you pick them, they're supposed to be a certain size, and that's when they're the most tender. Uh, depending on the variety, that's when they are the best. You know, some carrots are meant to be this big. Some carrots are meant to be more slender. You know, it's all up to the grower of when you want to harvest these things. And then that way, I can have a whole crap load of carrots. So I think that's gonna be in the works for next year. This is such an amazing annual that I suggest that everyone start to grow if you're not already. You know, I know that I'm not telling you guys really a whole lot of new stuff here, you know? I'm sure everyone's familiar at this point with carrots for the most part, but for my area, it's hard to beat, you know? It just keeps going. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. Um, hope to catch you all for the next one. Take care.